Hello viewers and uh, welcome to the third of our Daytona USA videos. So uh, if you've enjoyed the first couple then you'll enjoy this one as well. So this is just uh, manual transmission now, pretty much like the first video again. Uh, arcade difficulty which is sort of considerably more difficult than the, uh, than the normal difficulty they've included in the game. Not the best start there but hey working my way through. As before actually, I, 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 you'll see I'm taking a different technique here now. I'm going for the uh, braking technique but got it wrong there, touched the wall. I could, well, actually I did run a, a, a time trial the other day on this and I think I've got about five lap times within the same second, same tenth, same hundredth. So once you do find a consistent braking area it's a lot easier. Obviously with 40 cars going around the circuit you've not got long to overtake all of them and that can occasionally bump you into a few walls. But hey, uh, up and running, 18 second laps, that's not really good enough to be honest. You want to be a little bit quicker than that. But uh, I'll continue to put in a better pace now in these next few laps. So it's a pretty simple game really, like brake early, you want to get into the curve of the corner and once you see the cars in there you just gradually apply the power, crossing the start finishing line at over 300 kilometers an hour, avoiding an accident narrowly there as well. Whenever you see those spinning cars just dodge for, for all your worth because they'll stop you dead on the spot or sometimes you can actually crash into them and that can be a bit messy. So where are we now? Coming on to lap 5, they fly by so quickly, I still find this more difficult than actually some of the advanced courses because it's just one corner you've got to get right and I still, I've never really perfected this one corner it is quite funny as many times I've been around it I've never found a way to to absolutely perfect it if you do you can do 16 seconds and I think the fastest time we saw someone do was a 15.95 once but and that's in the one player. Not to be not to be compared with multiplayer online. The online lap times are usually quicker if you've got second player boost running, which means you can run impossibly fast laps. So up to fifth place then. A couple of laps to go. That's not good, that's not helped me at all, but hey, we're still running. You really do need to be battling for the lead on the final lap. because uh, if it all just comes down to the final corner, then you know often I find the AI cars are very quick through there bit too wide through that corner but working my way up now this was always great in the arcade though you know when you had a big sort of you know eight eight of these lined up big crowds of people watching the days of the arcade seeing Daytona in action it would be really loud in the arcade as well so that's the first race done then good fun as ever I can't get enough of it besides this in the game there's also time trial modes there's uh, challenge modes I've completed all of those now and the challenge modes are pretty simple to be honest. A little bit too easy really, I prefer a little bit more difficulty there. There's also a Grand Prix mode where you can spend the amount of laps and your tyres will wear down. But as I say, that's again, that's it's good fun. There's also a survival mode where the score keeps going as long as you can keep driving and hitting checkpoints. And again, that's another mode where your tyres fade very quickly. So even though it may be 40 laps, you'll find that after about lap 10, you'll be all over the track. So it gets very difficult very quickly. It's something I'll, I'll put on future videos. I'm sure you've all had enough of Daytona USA by now, but there's, I'm sure there's a lot of you who haven't got it yet when it comes out in the UK. And I can say, if you enjoyed the original arcade machine, absolute purchase, must buy this game. It is fantastic. So advanced now, I can't get enough of this course. You know, I don't know how many laps I've done of this course in my life, far too many far too many to count so what's going on here going back to the menu screen here we go again so into advanced manual transmission there we go taking my time thinking about it the classic screen the, the preparation still reminds me of the big arcade machines though nice feel to it Obviously also we have bigger TVs now, we have like 42 inch, 50 inch LCD and plasma. You know, back then at home I had a 25 inch TV, you know, that was the standard size as such. But it's nice to see it huge now on the big screen. So as for technique, the actual survival or the, the, the actual challenge modes actually do show you the gear shifting techniques which can take you to another level with it. Some corners you don't need to shift on, like here, it's just a brake and a slight gentle re reapplication of the power, and again a turn and brake there, and then gently applying the power again. 
here you can do two techniques, you can break in like I do there, or you can use a, a shift where you shift from fourth to second to fourth very quickly, and the same here. But I don't use that, I, I opt to stay in fourth because it's simply more consistent. So it might not necessarily be the quickest way, but it's the way I prefer to do it. For me, the, the shift to slide into a corner technique uh, leaves a lot of room for error. And I've raced a fair few of the top players online with it already. And I find consistently they will make a mistake often on one of the laps. And if you put them under pressure, there's a lot of room for error on it. So I've managed to win races even though I'm not necessarily quicker than they are. Obviously, if you was in a major tournament, then you'd want to learn that technique and run it all the time. But bashing my way through here, arcade modes, I say it's a little bit more difficult. I used to win this in the arcade anyway all the time, so for me, rediscovering that talent of 17 years ago wasn't too difficult. I'm just saying to myself, actually, where am I going to be in 10 years from now? Who would have thought to myself that 17 years later I'd be playing the same game, Arcade Perfect, and saying, wow, this is the first time we have a proper conversion. Amazing. I'll be playing it in another 17 years, no doubt, as well. And that's where games, you know, they really capture a moment of history, essentially. All the players that played this years ago will remind them just how great this game was. And a Fusaka Rally and Ridge Racer. These games redefined racing for us all. So battling there with uh, this other car, he's keeping up with me. No good. But with over a lap to go, I know it's uh, pretty comfortable. As long as you're up with the leader at this point, then you can pull out down the straight. Loads of speed now. Got the music going there, really gets you into it. Not quite running the line I want to run, I do want to run right close to the inside here, but you can see the car's a little bit twitchy, so I just hang there. But ordinarily, you'd want to be a little bit tighter to that inside line just to increase your pace. Great feeling through the tunnel. Really looking at how this course is created so that there's not too many strokes to reduce the amount of pop up you actually see. There is a lot more pop-up on the arcade machine than there is on this. I'm glad they removed that though. In fact, that was one of the things that did look pretty dated. Not that we necessarily had an issue with it at the time. Though the home version to conversion to Saturn was a different story. So coming round then, first place, another win there. So arcade mode is a little bit more challenging, but you'll quickly find yourself getting up to speed once you learn the basic cornering techniques. Manual transmission is quicker, obviously in a straight line, but also just all round, you know, it's, it's, it's a quicker option. There's not too many gear shifts to make, so the step up from automatic to manual is fairly noticeable, really. Just all in a little bit of technique on those sort of challenging corners where you just want to brake, turn in, and then gently apply a bit of power. So that's the advanced track out of the way. Simple driving techniques on it, but a lot of fun to play. Now, and now we'll move on to the expert course off I've put in my letters here. Lovely. Whole board's filled up with VVV now, which is fine. Beating the friends list as well. It's got to be done. But I'm sure there's somebody on there that's going to come on and destroy me at some point. Okay, so on to expert now. At the time, this seemed like a very challenging course, but uh, once I got hold of the Saturn version, I I played it so much back in the day. It's got that catchy, catchy music track as well. I'm not going to sing it yet. I'm not going to sing it yet. I'm going to save that for another day. A bit of Blue Blue Skies action. It's coming. So, first few cars in, you've just got to know your nine, the outside line there is always the way to go. The cars always do the same thing pretty much in every race, for the first few corners at least. So you just want to find your way through. It is amazing how the, uh, the tyres degrade in the second lap though, they, they degrade significantly, sliding all over the place. These little details like that, you know, tyres and progressive acceleration is all in here. And you think it wasn't back in the day, but it was. You know, they put it all there. Nice. So again, this is a tricky section. I saw somebody mention it about grip, and there is. There is a kind of a low feel of grip to this section. Uh, so you want to shift up and forth as quick as you can. 
and then here he's just come off the power and the car is sliding all the way through here, sliding, sliding, all the way through here, it's sliding, sliding everywhere, just turn in, the car slides, there's no braking, it slides all the way up there, you can hear the wheels uh, screeching away, so over the bridge then, no drama like before when I had those two guys crashing in my way, take this terrible, terrible knock there, you really want to hit that come off at 290, so I lost 40 kilometers now, I just hit it badly, waiting for the second time before breaking in. I hit the back of that car there, which was a bit of a disaster and slowed me down, so the corner didn't quite come off as it should have. Sometimes there's a little bit of luck needed at times like that. Just you hit a car at the wrong place at the wrong time, or sometimes they do just randomly spin in front of you and, and it can leave you with very little option to do anything. Notice you, you slide around in second, quickly up to third there, it gives you a little bit of a speed boost out of the corner. And now I can pull. So there, you know, really on a good lap, if you're doing a 149, maybe even a 148, you know, through there, you know, have a lot of speed to find where, you know, mistakes occur or cars in my way and stuff like that. Lots of grip there, so that corner's actually a bit more challenging this time. Over here. Breaking there, sliding my way through. Nice little, little touch on the inside I didn't want, slowed me down quite a bit, but you can see how the car's sliding about a bit there as well. They do have that grip gloss in here. So you just need to be progressive a little bit on the power there and working your way down for braking, sliding in down to third. You can slip up the fourth again there. Possibly I didn't there. Depends on your speed, whether you, whether you feel you want to do that. Now, uh, third place, I know I should comfortably catch the first two, but you still need to be a reasonable amount of precision there. That corner didn't go quite as quickly as I would have liked. But again, as I say, it's very slidey through there. Online races, actually, I've done a few of those. I've made a few videos of them as well, so I'll probably be putting those up in due course at some point. Get a collection together with one big, long, epic video, and then I'll just talk about all of it to you guys. These two knocking about in front of me, giving me a bit of time to close the gap on them. Again here, low grip through that section, the car slides about a lot. So I'm thinking, right, it's hairpin, or it's going to mean a restart. Come on, do it. And uh, I took that really well then as well. Perfect, perfect. So through there, quickly up into third, and away we go. So that's a win on that one as well. So viewers, that's uh, a look at Daytona with automatic gears, a look at the wireless wheel, manual transmission and there'll be some online racing and stuff like that to come but I hope you've enjoyed that little look to the past and uh, there'll be more to come on that very soon as well but that's it from now for, for me for now viewers uh, more soon